This is for Wardley123 on my YouTube channel, July 15th, 2010. So anyway, I'll tell you a story. I've got a few, you know, you meet a few people in this field and uh, I've met a few friends and uh, it's good, it's great. So you get to see all these zany, wacky, you know, theories and you get to see them put in practice. And one friend would look at the clock and say, well, I can't eat yet. It's it's 11.34. I've got to wait till 12 noon and then I can eat. <laughs> I'm serious, you know, this person would look at the digital clock and go, all right, I've got to wait until the clock says, then I can eat. And it's like, you know, it's like you're doing interval training or something. That's fair enough. But when it comes to eating, man, eat it. So anyways, it's, uh, our friend is like just freaking out about the, the clock and the time and just so hungry and then they eat so much so fast and go oh I've overeaten and then the, you know what I mean and then they the digestion's getting screwed up because they're trying to fit in like a massive amount of calories in a short time and then they're trying to eat before sundown or they're just staying up late at night to eat you know eating at midnight and then <laughs> waking up feeling terrible skipping breakfast getting to lunchtime ravenous, getting to dinner even more ravenous, and just repeating this cycle again. We call it the vicious cycle. I call eating breakfast the delicious cycle. It puts you in a good cycle. Skipping breakfast means you're racing to get calories between, you know, midday and, and evening time. So you're eating close to bed, and that's, that's not the best, you know. It's better to eat something close to bed than nothing at all. It's the, the best strategy is big breakfast, big lunch, and a light dinner, yeah? A light dinner. Or if you're doing, need more energy, you're big dinner as well. But have your dinner at least three hours before you go to sleep, ideally. You know what I mean? But if you have big breakfast and big lunch, you're not going to probably need a big dinner because you've already had your 3,000, 4,000, 10,000 calories. You know, if you had that caloric sufficiency, and you're going to notice profound shifts in your energy levels, your emotional stability, and your well being, and your bliss factor, and all that stuff. It's a lot more fun. Try it sometime, wake up, drink a litre of water, do your daily activity, whatever it is, and then start your big breakfast, and then, you know, a few hours later, have your big lunch, and then a light dinner, and you will notice profound shifts. Anyone can do it. It doesn't cost any money. See ya. Good book to read. Vegan Body Building and Fitness by Robert Cheek, a.k.a. RC, and it's, uh, I just actually got this this morning here in Australia. It's got some good shots. It's got here, Robert, training. You see that? Vegan, bodybuilder. And it's actually got a good section there for people into raw food, raw vegan. We've got, uh, how do I pronounce it right? We've got uh, Giacomo Machis. He's a raw vegan bodybuilder there. So, for all your people into lifting weights and stuff like that, Vegan Bodybuilding and Fitness by Robert Cheek. Check out the site. Get a copy and educate yourself from someone who's getting the results you desire. Another great thing I regularly read is Vegan Voice. It's an Australian vegan magazine. Uh, they do send overseas. It's got some great articles in there. You know, it's, it's a good thing to give to people who aren't really sure what vegan is about. It's got, it's actually, this is a magazine that got me vegan. I went vegetarian for one week. I got a copy of Vegan Voice and I went vegan overnight because I learned about how bad dairy is for your health and the truth about the dairy industry. And I was like, man, I'm out of here. I'm, I'm going vegan overnight. This is a magazine. Changed my life. Vegan voice. And uh, I've got a little wallet here from my friend Michael Arnstein. This is from Totally Tubular Designs. It's a wallet made out of a, an old bike tire, which looks like a Continental GP4000. And it's some bicycle tubes as well. And you can, you know, put all your things in there. Any money. And Freely just got one today. Where are we here? Check out this. This is like a, you know, this is one made out of bike tubes as well. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's great. And it costs $50, but it's, it's, worth, it's a worthwhile industry support. I mean, you can make this yourself, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're handy. So it's, uh, it's great. So yeah, always good things. Another thing I'm using on bike touring, a Solio. I power my GPS watch on this, my Garmin. I power my MP3 player. Just put it in the sunshine, and it folds up like that. You know, <laughs> James Bond sort of gadget. Really good. Solio.com. Little things I recommend. 
What else have we got here? That's about it. Today was great. I actually had a 15 kilometer running race this morning and I set a PB, 15 kilometers running in 59.13. That's a PB. Yesterday, I raced A grade on the road bike. So even though I set a PB this morning, I think if I didn't race yesterday, I could have done a little bit faster because I think when you race, it saps your speed for the next 24 hours. But hey, I set a PB. That's what it's about. I was happy with that. Talk to you soon. Check this out. This is a 2,000 calorie drink. Mm. Mm. We've got Alice Spring dates in there, cane juice, and some passion fruit from the garden. It's a nice hairdo you got there. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I styled it myself. <laughs> 2,000 calorie. So two of these, 4,000 calories a day. People say, oh, I'll be sitting around eating all day. Mm. People ask me what I think of Dan, the man. Life Regenerator, I think he's a great guy, he's definitely an entertaining speaker and his YouTube videos are very, very easy to watch, he's got some fantastic things to say. And a person asked me, uh, they said Dan is going to do a, a, just a, a fat and greens experiment to see if he could increase his athletic performance, I think I got that right. Um, if that is right, I think that's probably a less than the best way to increase your athletic performance by cutting out sweet fruit and trying to get more fat from the fermented seeds and nuts and stuff like that, they're fine but if that's going to be your primary calorie source or a majority of a calorie source, you're going to have a, a decrease in your fitness level as your glycogen tanks just become deficient. You know, glucose exhaustion, I've been watching the Tour de France lately and there's been a few riders of glucose exhaustion where your glycogen is just, Phew, see you later, and they're going backwards. It doesn't matter if you're on a 6.8 kilogram bike or if you've ridden 30,000 kilometers in the last year and you're the best in the world. If your glucose is, your glycogen is down, you know, end, end of the story. So if we try and you know, cut out carbohydrate foods being, you know, sweet fruits and stuff like that. We're just going to, we're not going to be doing too well. But hey, you got to try it for yourself sometimes. You know, sometimes you got to, you got to try, try and make a square wheel, square wheel before you realize that the wheel should be round. So it's a winter's day here. It's July and this is a, a beautiful winter in Byron Bay. I just came back from a 90 kilometer bike ride this morning. I wanted to make it a bit more challenging this morning. So I went out on my mountain bicycle with my knobbly tires, my dual suspension disc brake mountain bike and I went out with the road bunch and they're like, Harley, you going for a mountain bike ride today? I said, yeah, with you guys. And they're like, you're not going to keep up with a mountain bike, you know, you need a road bike and I'm like, yeah, okay, we'll see, we'll see if I can keep up and for sure, we had we had king of the mountain preems, every mountain climb, every hill, we smashed up every single hill and uh, I was definitely up there mixing it with them and, and uh, actually jumping jumping across many many a climb to take the, the, the line on us on the training ride. <laughs> it's good fun, good workout. I'm pretty smashed right now. 90 Ks. Doesn't matter who you are, how good an athlete you are, if you go high fat and become glucose you know deficient, you're gonna you're gonna drop down and you start to question a lot of things. You know, you might question veganism or raw or whatever. And uh, that's understandable because when you feel shit you look for options, you know. You look for options. When humans are starved, they'll eat meat. When birds, like pigeons, are starved, they'll eat meat. Check out this pigeon eating chicken in Bangkok.